let us now take a look at the relevance of data both for you to understand generally generally appreciate what is this big data now if a steel manufacturing company or an automobile company makes losses right at the industrial company the stock prices are badly affected valuation will come down right this is what normally happens but look at some other information stories in 2016 uber technologies reported a loss of 3.8 billion so it continued to make losses for the next two years what is its value then a value of a company which made such a huge loss two years back was 80 billion dollars within two years time it's not that it made huge revenues and and changed it around followed so so though you're making losses its valuation is improving facebook paid 1 billion dollars for purchasing instagram what was instagram instagram was not making any money it was a company making no money but still but still facebook was ready to pay 1 billion dollars for it and how it was helped facebook it paid 19 billion dollars to purchase whatsapp in 2014 19 billion dollars whatsapp was having no profit no revenues microsoft purchased linkedin for 26 billion so what what are we talking about what we are trying to say is these digital companies their valuation is something different right right who so uber made the made losses Losses. It was a loss-making company. It was valued at eighty billion dollars. Who would think that, right? Not that it was not that it was a very old established company who had a lot of assets with it. No, right? Similarly, why would Facebook pay a billion dollars for purchasing Instagram or nineteen billion dollars for purchasing WhatsApp? Neither of which were generating any revenue. What value did Facebook see in Instagram? What value did Facebook see in WhatsApp? what value did microsoft see in linkedin the valuation of digital companies is so different correct unlike the other traditional brick and mortar companies that we have what is the rationale behind this valuation what assets do these companies possess they do not have physical assets to show in their buildings they may have no inventories they may have no physical product what does Facebook manufacture, right? One more data. When Walmart had 115 billion hard assets, right? Its valuation was around 300 billion at the time, and it had hard assets. Hard assets, when I talk about, I'm talking about long-term assets, not considering the long-term assets or deducted liabilities. Just a general understanding, very long-term assets, tangible, long-term tangible assets. When Walmart had 115 billion hard assets, its valuation was 300 billion at the moment. Market capitalization valuation. How am I taking the number of shares which are outstanding into the market price of the share? So look, that's how you value the existing company which is listed, right? Facebook, if you look at their hard assets, had only 32 billion dollars of hard assets, long-term tangible assets. But its valuation was five hundred and fifteen billion, five hundred and fifteen billion dollars. No hard asset, but no inventories, no assets. You know, the valuation. Digital companies' valuation is something so different. Digital companies. So what do they have? They have intangibles. Intangibles. They may have put a lot of money in research and development. They must have put money into data analytics long time ago, but they must have had the sense to understand the value of data and 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 had apps where where people would come together so that the data of so many people was available. Correct? They may have supplier networks, customer networks, social relationships. These are all these are all intangible assets. Now. When investments are made in these intangibles, right? Our accounting standards, our GAAP, does not allow us to show them as an asset because you don't know what what is going to be worth or what income it is going to generate. Yes, so no. So they are just treated as expenses, and what happens therefore the companies become loss-making companies because they made huge investments 
in in these intangible assets which are not considered as asset, not considered as asset in the valuation. If it's not asset, it's an expense. If you have such high expenses, then what happens? Then you're making a loss. So these digital companies were mostly losses initially. And for a period of time, why did they acquire these assets? Why did he acquire Instagram? Right? Because because these intangibles need revenue. So many people on Instagram. All people who are on Instagram have become have become part of uh, Facebook, right? <clears throat> it's the same company now. More data is being shared. Valuation reflects not just the current performance of the company, but the potential for future growth. So this valuation, the methods of valuation will have to change. Correct? Methods of valuation, I can't just take my network and say that's the valuation of the company. Its ability to generate future income, that also needs to be considered for valuation. That is the beauty of data. Data is able to generate, generate, generate revenues in future. Data, data, data. Everybody wants customer data. Facebook has so many people. Everybody wants to advertise. People can get so much of that money. <laughs> On Facebook's platform, more the content, more the system growth without any corporate investment. See, for example, if if Walmart or a steel company wants wants to sell more, they have to produce more. You have a manufacturing cost, right? Then you can sell that and earn some profit. But that's not the case in Facebook's platform, right? More content and more people coming, they have no further investment. It's a margin of nothing. It's just scalable. They have no further corporate investment. So Facebook has the Facebook Connect app, Amazon has the Amazon Web Services, Apple has the Apple Store, Google has the App Engine, Android, so many things. These are all companies who have created an infrastructure. And since this infrastructure is global, it's on the web, it's it's intangible. These have not even been shown as assets. Right? So uh, they've created, because of this infrastructure, what happens? For them to grow big and bigger, is easy. More people join, they become big. There is no further investment for them because their infrastructure is in the cloud. Yes or no? More the people use the infrastructure, more their value goes in. They are scalable, grow fast, very fast. You know, the whole way of thinking we need to change. So, consumer internet companies are value better. <clears throat> data is the new oil. This is a great slide by Jared Bernard. <clears throat> he says data is the new oil, it's a new source of power, and the people who control data, Amazon, Facebook, Google, they have become very, very, very powerful. The Five biggest, that's the four of the five biggest uh, highly uh, companies with the highest valuation are digital companies. They include Amazon, Facebook. <coughs> Data mining agents therefore have a responsibility, but it also says we've not brought up the ethical issues here. Uh, but uh, that's, this 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 power should not be misused. It should be for the benefit of humanity. In fact, as we go forward, the more of uh, the more artificial intelligence is created, the more robots that are created, it is the it is the human touch, it is the humanity, let us say, that, that will now stand up or set corporates apart. So they also also the data is making companies powerful. They should retain their their human side and ensure that data is used uh, used uh, for the benefit of humanity, not, I repeat, not at the cost of their, uh, at their cost. They will also stand to benefit as a result. Just some examples. What are we looking at? The relevance of data, the importance of data, right? The stores of data is the most invaluable asset of Facebook. So what is Facebook's asset? The data that it has, data. Well, why targeted advertising to users? People who are coming on to the right. 
if I have a product to sell, I would like to advertise it on Facebook because I know there are so many million users there. And, and I can do targeted audience because the Facebook has, <clears throat> has age, it has gender, right? It has occasion, right? Your birthday is there. I know that this before your birthday, I can target. I can target if, if I am a cake manufacturer or, 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 or I, I arrange events or are you following? I, I throw parties on behalf of somebody else. I can throw parties, arrange parties. I'm an event manager. Do you understand? Then I can target. Who will be targeted just a month before your birthday? Are you following? So if this is great with as far as Facebook is concerned, targeted advertising to use. The data and the potential to use that data is largely how Facebook provides its value. It's the fourth most valuable brand. Facebook. Facebook is the biggest social network worldwide with 2.41 billion monthly active users as of the second quarter of 2019. 500,000 new users every day, 4 new petabytes of data per day is what has been generated and it has 100 personal data points that it uses to target ads to consumers. Let us just take a look at this study. This was from an article in Washington Post. See, on the basis of location, where you are, you can target, right? My, my shop is going to target, or the age, or the generation, gender, education level, home ownership. Are you getting the idea, right? Now, users have an anniversary within 30 days. They can be targeted in birthdays. You can. Users in new relationships who have jobs, newly engaged, newly married, newly moved. Birthday soon. Are you following students, parents, expectant parents, mothers? Look at this. Mothers have also been divided by type. The trendy types of a type of Those who are involved in politics. What is the car that you bought? Depending on the car you bought, style you use, your of car. Do you have small business, big business, your management executives? What, what is your profession? Right? I'm not going through all of them, but see how targeted it can be. Those who have allergies. Other study, not for you to mug up, more for you to see how targeted advertising can be done with Facebook. More than 200 million people visit the Amazon site every month. They are known. Of course, they do just survive. They are very competitively priced, quick shipping, very reliable customer service. Buy something from Amazon, I don't like it, I have to return it. Very smooth process, no problem at all. So, great customer service. A large section of its members have what is called a prime membership. That means you have to pay fees for annual, annual charges. If you have paid and if you have paid this uh, annual membership fee and become a prime member, you don't all have to. If you don't pay, you are not a prime member. That's why you can still go on Amazon and buy stuff and watch movies. But the prime membership gives you certain benefits. And obviously, there are more active prime members than there are non-prime members because once I paid a fee, I want to make the most of it. So you have what's called a stickiness of customer. I will buy stuff more from Amazon than from any other platform because I've already paid a, paid a uh, fee before. Okay. That is why I may sellers also. Now, if I am selling something, I know there are 200 million people visiting Amazon. I would like to put my product on Amazon. I would like to advertise my product. I would like to sell through Amazon. Good. Relevance of data. That's what we were discussing. Just given you some examples. So that you understand how data has become so important and how the, the, the largest, the companies with largest market cap today are all digital companies.